Hi guys, uh, welcome to the latest webinar. This is webinar number 11 now, so we're uh, moving along nicely. We've got two a week for the foreseeable future, so um, thanks for joining us. Um, since the last time we, we met on here Monday, um, Boris has obviously announced that we're we're good to go in general from the 12th of April, which is good news. So I'm um, happy about that. Hopefully you all are too, although if you run a class-based facility, you've probably got a little bit longer to wait. So um, yeah, just bear with it. Bear with Boris and he'll get us all out. Scotland's a little bit longer by the sound of it, and we're not sure what's happening with Wales and Northern Ireland. So we'll keep you updated on those. Uh, back to the uh, to the webinar in hand. So today is hosted by Therabody and uh, creators of Theragun. We've got Marcus Pestle and Ben McNamara, who, uh, who work for those guys. Um, they're going to be running us through recovery reinvented. So it's all about, um, hopefully I've got this term right, percussive massage therapy. I think that's the right term. So um, we've seen these around, they're making a huge sort of impact, I think, in, in the industry at the moment. So um, on that note, I'm going to hand over to the guys and they're going to crack on. So over to you guys. Thanks, Robert. Thanks for having us. Uh, I think we'd like to start with just initially uh, outlining kind of our position on wellness and, and how we're sort of currently thinking that through. Um, I think for us, you know, we've really taken time during the lockdown and, and the pandemic to really consider how we're defining wellness and how we're thinking about articulating that to the member. Um, I think we're very aware that it's, it's both a personal and a professional sort of obligation to be well. Uh, it's, it's very much a, an awareness of our really considerable ability and then an appreciation of our responsibility to be well. It, and it's actually inclusive of several different uh, sort of mutually independent dimensions. There's physical wellness, intellectual wellness, emotional wellness, social wellness, uh, vocational. I think people are working longer and harder than they ever did, working from home, being tied to their Zoom screen and back-to-back -back calls. Uh, environmental wellness, financial wellness, there's several different aspects. And I think from our kind of perspective as a brand, we're really focused on sort of helping people to really strive for their own personal harmony that's that's really you know most true to themselves so we naturally have our own goals approaches and and ambitions individually and our and our own sort of visions of what it means to live life to the fullest but we really believe in in creating and and really finding ways for for people to blend their wellness activity uh into their everyday routines so if we come on to the next slide, I think one of the most elusive skills for a lot of people to develop is sleep. And I think it's certainly worth uh, talking about and mentioning when we consider wellness. Uh, as we think about sort of the people that we serve, our ultimate goal is to really help them in, enhance their wellness behaviours um, and enhance behaviours which have a, a natural benefit and reduce the behaviors which naturally have negative effects. And one of the ways that we've really been able to achieve this is through digital innovation and utilizing our app. And the reason why we wanna focus on, on this innovation is ultimately to achieve scalable behavior change. Um, the Therabody app, it's really designed to put a, a very simple spin on our education and help people understand, hey, you know, where should I use this on my body? How should I, how should I use this on, on different parts of my body and do it in a way which is very friendly uh, for anybody to understand. Uh, my grandpa is using this across his knees in the morning before he gets out in the morning to do some gardening. It really speaks to the fact that, yes, there's people in elite settings that utilize this technology, but it's also the everyday people that suffer from you know muscular aches and pains and something that's really powerful is that we work with a wearable technology company to really better understand hey you know when people do use our app what are some of the effects that we see and so we did a sleep study uh, with the biostrap wrist worn sensor and it's a medical grade and uh, medically validated piece of wearable technology which looks at heart rate variability and different sleep metrics and if you come on to the next slide, Marcus, we had a five week study with two weeks of baseline measures, no intervention. It was very much done in a free living design. The only thing that we asked people to do was utilize the Therabody app and the Theragun uh, for six minutes using our sleep protocol within the app. Um, 
and they use this 30 minutes before bed. If you come on to the next slide, and you guys can take a look through some of the information here, why sleep. Uh, they weren't asked to do anything else. They could still consume caffeine. Uh, they could still exercise at any time throughout the day. They can consume alcohol. We wanted this to be very much a free living design where we simply just look at the effects of percussive therapy and utilizing the app as a digital intervention. So we really believe in sleep being a critical pillar of wellness. And if you come on to the next slide, Marcus, we, we really saw some incredible results. 87% uh, of the population, which was 73 adults, having uh, quite significant improvements in sleep latency. 70% uh, had significant improvements in sleep efficiency. In terms of uh, sleep score and, excuse me, the combination of these metrics uh, that Biostrap put together, 56% of them improved their overall sleep score. Uh, and that's created through duration, deep sleep efficiency, uh, awakenings, uh, movement and other biometrics. And if we come on to the next slide, the significant improvements uh, in heart rate variability after just one single treatment uh, really speaks to some of those more global effects uh, in terms of the autonomic nervous system that we see when people use percussive therapy. And this, this really speaks to the fact that you can have uh, a fantastic device like the Theragun product. Uh, it's a, an amazing piece of technology. But having a dependable digital channel is really important. Uh, and digital innovation can really help drive uh, behavior change with positive outcomes. So we're really proud of our app. We've worked very hard to ensure that it completely represents the way Dr. Jason would use percussive therapy in every situation. Uh, and if we, if we come down into the next slides, these are some of the results just to conclude that, that sleep study. Uh, we can come on to the next slide. We can share this information with you guys as well. When we look at how this relates to percussive therapy uh, and on to the next slide, it's really important that we define this. Uh, through necessity, Dr. Jason pioneered an opportunity for us to effectively achieve two things on the body simultaneously. And the effects of pressure on the body and locally targeted vibration stimulus are very well known. Uh, they've been done for quite some time by human beings. But percussive therapy is really the combination of those two things. And there's a number of factors on the next slide that really come together to, to create what we call the essential trio. And one of them is amplitude and the, the percussive therapy delivered via the Theragun has a considerably deeper and longer stroke length than various different uh, products that we see within the landscape. And this is a very important factor when we think about applying pressure to the body. The next slide is about frequency. We think carefully about how many times the device makes contact with the body within a space and a unit of time, whether that's a second or a minute. If people want to experience lighter pressure, they can have a slower speed. If they want to increase the pressure, they can have a faster speed. And that culminates together through our talk and the ability of a product to be able to withstand the lifetime of, of being inside of a health club. So the talk is all about the power within the motor. Um, on the next slide, we, we then like to sort of, after we define percussive therapy, really look at, okay, you know, some of the scientific rationale behind this and how we can start to utilize this within movement. So as I said, uh, you know, human beings have applied pressure to their body for quite some time. Percussive therapy is the really, uh, really the latest innovation on that timeline of applying pressure to the body. I think we've understood uh, the beneficial effects, the therapeutic effects, this perceptual responses of receiving massage and things of that nature. And I think, you know, now more than ever, people are incredibly tense um, and, you know, being locked in the confines of the same four walls has really been something where receiving regular treatments and, you know, having an opportunity to go and seek, you know, physiotherapy care and things of that nature, it's been quite limited for people. And we've certainly seen uh, you know, a really great uplift in people being able to call upon the passive nature of this modality uh, and, and use it 
wherever and, and whenever they need it. So on the next slide, we talk about some of the local responses. Uh, blood is really the transport mechanism. Two minutes of percussive therapy increases blood flow by up to 500%. So it really speaks to the fact that we don't need to use this for very long at all in order to achieve the effects that we're looking for. We talk about local responses happening uh, at the tissues underneath the attachment. And then as we move through, we look at some of more of the global responses. And so you can see, you know, I think increased relaxation and really being able to sort of down regulate and calm down is such a great thing for people right now. Um, and being able to do it in a natural way is, is certainly something that's benefiting a lot of people. And there's always the effects of the responses. So we talk about the response, the effect, and then most importantly, the application of those effects. And there's really three defined scenarios where we see uh, percussive therapy being utilized, whether that's to increase our readiness uh, for work or movement. It might just be a long day back to back dealing with homeschooling the children. It doesn't always need to be in relation to activity and exerting ourselves. Um, being able to increase different uh, restorative aspects of recovery. Uh, we talk about using the device um, prior to sleep, as I've mentioned, uh, after a long day of being sympathetically driven <laughs> Uh, with an increased time on Zoom and emails and notifications and all of the things associated with working from home. And then to be able to just relieve those minor acute aches and pains that we all experience. They're really the key situations where we, we see the technology being utilized. And then as we relate this to movement and sort of getting into the granularities of how to use it, what we have is obviously our app, which is wonderful and you know, really speaks to the various different protocols, ailments, different areas of the body, different activities. But this is now kind of stepping it up a notch and looking at some of the sort of different variables within the device. So if we come on to the next slide, we can apply percussive therapy uh, before an activity uh, to really prepare specific areas of the body that are about to be trained. It can increase uh, blood flow, muscle oxygenation, improve active range of motion. We can increase the neurological activation of the muscles, reduce any sort of pain or soreness that somebody currently has. And then also thinking about some of the protective effects against that soreness. As I mentioned, we're really seeking to achieve scalable behavior change and allow people to understand that, hey, you know, recovery happens before the training session even begins. And so Naturally, some of these benefits become uh, slightly more relevant when you know we are working with people that have limited range of motion, or as will certainly be the case very soon, um, people are about to do a training session that's likely going to make them sore. I think we will see a lot of that as as the clubs reopen. People are going to be very eager <laughs> to get back in and and kind of resume where they left off, and so percussive therapy when it's applied during a training session, it can really be used to promote recovery uh, for specific areas of the body that are experiencing fatigue or are about to be trained again. So for example, in between sets and reps, um, we can promote recovery within the movement. I think that's a great thing. Uh, focus on building those new habits, uh, increasing the blood flow, hydrating the tissue. And then when we think about its use after the movement or after the training session, we're really just looking at the modality being uh, a great opportunity to maximize recovery for those areas that have been worked. So decrease in post-exercise soreness, increase in blood flow, delivering those much needed nutrients uh, to the muscle, improving the soft tissue function. Okay, so, and then the six is the, the key variables. So what we wanted to do was take the appreciation of Dr. Jason as the innovator of the entire category and really distill that down into six steps. So this is all articulated in our app in a really simple way. We talk about duration. We talk about the force on the body, the speed that we can move at. And then the four, five, and six is the direction, different directions we can move on the body, different attachments. We, we're really proud of our attachments. We focus on them a lot. We don't believe in hard plastic attachments. We think 
the density and the texture is very important. We also believe in the cleanliness and the hygiene of the attachment. I think now more than ever, that's a really important point. We want to make sure that the attachments won't absorb any sweat or lotions or materials from the skin. They're very easy to disinfect and, and wipe on and wipe off. And then there's various different ways we can hold the device. So we never wanted to sacrifice the user's hand when they're, when they're utilizing percussive therapy. And the triangle really speaks to that. And then if we move on, I think I can turn it to you, Marcus, just to kind of outline some of the kind of, you know, health club offerings and solutions that we have at our disposal. Brilliant. Um, just making sure you can hear me. and I'm not on mute. Fantastic. Okay, so my, my, this next section in the last section is looking at our health club offerings uh, in the respect of how this could live and breathe on your uh, gym floors, how the members can engage with the product through uh, group classes, through the reception area, through that whole member journey when they're going into the facility. So I'll start with the video and I'll make sure we're able to view this okay. And you can all see my screen still. Okay, so what that, that showed there was a, a, a typical member journey, how that could look and feel when, when you're working your way through the club. And so what we want to do is highlight to you, uh, there's different options. And, and when we get the option to speak to you individually, uh, should you reach out, we can take you through the different uh, return on investment models for the different solutions that we have. But there's a simple solution you can look at, looking at your reception area. You've got that from a, uh, a single product point of view where someone can uh, come up ask to check out a product or, or pick up a product to test it on themselves. You also have the opportunity of a retail solution, which I'll touch on later on as we go through this, where you can have retail displays on hand for, for members to be able to look and decide if they like the product, use the product, and want to be able to purchase their own product. They can do that through yourselves. But intentionally, we want the member to be able to pick up the device and be able to use this product either through a personal trainer, through a group class, or through um, using it themselves autonomously on the, on the gym floor. So what we've got is we have things like the countertop unit. And if you consider yourself as uh, looking at your membership and looking at ways of how can I make money from this product, um, not just by the ability to retail the product, I want to be able to drive additional revenue into my business. Well, a simple solution could be a, a, member, a bolt on membership for recovery. That could be charging five pound a month. If you can penetrate five to 10% of your membership base to have that extra solution and, and put that over a two year period, you'll find your, and I say we have the, the models to reflect this, but we can showcase that over a two year period showing how you can generate that revenue uh, from that checkout. And the reason why it's able to be maintained or manned is you have this product behind your front desk. 
and your staff from the front desk are able to issue the device for a member coming in, showing their membership card that they have access to that, um, that type of membership as well. Moving on to the gym floor, we have a couple of options you saw in the video, the gym cart, uh, that houses a number of devices, six pros plus the four wave rollers as well. On the top banner, it can be customized to your specific club. And we can also have the opportunity on there to put a QR code to allow members to purchase directly from uh, the carts as well. We also have on the left hand side a video as well, which has been linked through to around 40 different videos showcasing the different muscle groups on how to apply the Theragun and also the wave roller as well. So it allows your members to feel empowered that they can take the device and use it. This product is sold across the globe by, and bought by a number of consumers anyway. So as Ben was alluding to around the app, the app will help the, and guide the member into how to use the product. But what we wanted to do on the gym floor is provide that opportunity there and then where members could scan a QR code and, and watch it as well, uh, watch the videos. And of course, if you have media screens, et cetera, in your facilities, we also have the content that can live on those to provide that education uh, in front of those members as well. In your club, as you're going through, you've got, as Ben alluded to as well, you've got the opportunity for recovery, reactivation, and, and uh, the warm-up as well. So instead of where we used to have the warm-up areas or the stretch areas in the clubs and suppliers, I'm, I'm one of them in my past, notoriously designing gyms to take away those stretch areas to put more gym equipment in, well, I'm on the other fence now. We're coming back and we're, we're, we're actively trying to make sure your members are engaging in that, in that process to re reduce the amount of injuries they get, make sure they're training, making sure that they are able to move better, feel better. And ultimately, if you can make a member move better, feel better, train better, I'm not putting words in your mouth, but that is retention. They're going to stay longer because they're going to get results from all of that. So we're looking at this as a way of how do we help the member get the results they're looking for? And you know, some people come to the gym, all they're looking for is mobility and they're looking for the ability to be able to move a bit easier. So by applying percussive therapy in a way with a trainer or by themselves, they're able to drive the fluid, the oxygen through those muscle areas and be able to train in a better way and be able to move a bit easier, and maybe even touch their toes uh, for the first time in a while. So if you're looking at a warm-up area, um, we're looking at a different, a couple of solutions there. And the warm-up uh, is highlighted. It's around 30 seconds for warm-up, as you saw in the six that uh, Ben showed. And for recovery, you're looking around one to two minutes. Again, we can show these videos uh, later on, or we can share this for you uh, to view. But uh, we can talk through working on the origin of the muscle, the insertion of the muscle, and across the muscle belly, uh, just to make sure you're driving the blood flow through that area. <clears throat> and then we've got the main areas in the gym where you've got the workout, the strength area. Again, putting that into use, if you've got people who are on the racks, on the rigs, doing heavy squats, doing deadlifts, doing uh, any sort of movement like that, where they're taking a rest period between breaks, the opportunity for that minute usually is sat there on the bench, taking up everyone's space while they're sat on the bench. But why don't you give them a purpose? Hold that they take the Theragun, they're in between sets, I've just worked my quads, let me just flush the quads for 15 seconds. Now I can get back on and perform better in the next set. Rather than that fatigue, that lactic acid buildup, that muscle ache that comes in when you're doing constant amount of reps. Uh, for example, if you're doing a just a basic Tabata, 20 seconds on of air squats, and you're going flat out for 20 seconds, that burn is, is quite considerable. Obviously, Tabata, 10 seconds in between, well, probably not enough time to do a full flush, but certainly between sets you could look at. And then moving on to the group classes, as you saw in the video, uh, we, we you have the opportunity to have these living on the studio floor where an instructor can lead a full uh, activation or warm up prior to the class. It can be integrated within the class as well, and it can also live uh, as a recovery session post class. We've also looked at clubs where we have these outside the studios. So we understand you do have your own concepts, your own uh, ideas for your group class experiences, and you can't integrate Theragun into those spaces. We understand that. However, that doesn't mean pre and post, there isn't an opportunity to engage with the product, to allow them to prepare before the class and recover afterwards. 
one of the things that Ben alluded to in, in, in the types of ways that people feel mindfulness and their well-being is that social aspect. Utilizing this product in social environments gives people that ability to connect with each other. You talk about what they're doing, their training, commun communicate with each other. We all know once these gyms open again, they're all going to want to be talking to each other. It's going to be down to you as operators to create those social experiences now and to help people feel good about being back in the gym and engaging with other people. And they're not, they're going to be looking forward to that. I know I am myself. And then you've got the retail solutions. I say the main focus from my side is looking at that member experience of making them feel better, move better, and get better results as a result of training better. So that is the main uh, forefront of it. The byproduct of that is people are very interested in this, and they'll be looking at thinking, what's the other 23 hours of the day look like when I'm not in the health club, not in the gym, or not training? That's where you need to be able to advise them and say, it's how they sleep. It's how they move. It's where they work. It's the type of activities they do. They may be a bit of a weekend warrior, but they go off and do 10Ks or they go hiking with the family. You need to be able to engage with their entire lifestyle and think, how do we, how do we uh, get, give our members the best opportunity to move and feel better in, in life? So having that retail solution um, allows you to be able to have the product in the club and allow members the opportunity to have that impulse purchase where they want to buy it. You can have the opportunity of not having to stock product. You can do it via dropship where you can uh, place, have orders placed at the club and then send us the order for the day and we will ship the product out to the member. Alternatively, you can use affiliate links where members can uh, click on a link through your website where they can then uh, select a product, buy it, we'll ship it to them, and then we can pay back commissions, etc. from there. As I said, once we get the opportunity to speak to you individually, we can take you through all the different uh, types that's best suited for your facility. Some of you will have the storage capability. Some will have front desks where you can have products sat behind it or in locked away cupboards. Some of you won't have any re reception area whatsoever, and you need to have an alternative solution where QR codes or affiliate links are better placed. But we've got all the different options available to facilitate this in the best way for you and your club as well. And that's me talk through that. We've roughly taken around 30 minutes. So uh, we'll open up to Q&A, Robert. Awesome. Great stuff, guys. That's um, really, uh, really interesting stuff there. So I've been watching you guys and uh, these products for a while and it's sort of very tempting. So seeing it firsthand is great. Um, we did have a question come through from Lee. I'll answer that one shortly. I've made a few, few notes. So I think you've probably answered most of them, really. Um, how often would you advise the members using these products? Is it every session or is it three times a week or...? What's the sort of uh, the average? Ben, if I pass it to you. Yeah, absolutely. So I think in regards to movement, uh, we generally sort of advise 30 seconds per kind of key muscle group that is sort of about to be trained. Um, but then for in the home use and, uh, you know, using it away from perhaps kind of gym settings, I was talking to a gentleman uh just the other day, wonderful man, 64 years of age. He was telling me the Theragun uh, and our dampener attachment has changed his life. He uses it two minutes before he goes out for a walk, two minutes when he gets back, just sort of paints his entire body, floats it really kind of calmly and comfortably across his entire body. And then he uses it for two minutes before he goes to bed. So six minutes total. So because it is so effective in such a short window of time, that's a really cool thing to talk about. You actually don't need to use it for very long at all. Um, so hopefully that kind of gives you those two different scenarios, talking about the gym and then thinking about home use as well. Uh, and the app always reflects duration in the protocol. So it has a series of steps and, and kind of generally the time frame is 30 seconds per area. Awesome. But you, see, you can, but you can use it literally every day. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> value out of that. Um, in terms of the, I think the obvious thing is from a gym owner is making money from it. And he talks about the various ways. What do you find is the most popular utilization? Is it the retail or is it the, the rental model to so the, the bolt on membership? So up, up, up until now, it's been the retail solution of driving retail. And the most successful is through uh, holding stock 
in the facility to allow for that impulse purchase. However, we're very aware that that retail solution, and and we wouldn't would never say that you're going to sell thousands of these a month. Uh, it's down to who's driving it, who's pushing it within the club, etc. Uh, that's why we're looking at this member bolt-on option as a solution where members can charge that additional or clubs can charge that additional fee to have access to recovery. And that becomes a steady monthly incremental revenue that can come in in the same way that your direct debits come in and your monthly fees come in. You start have, have, add, adding that additional value. And on top of that, you've then got the personal trainers. Do they charge for additional sessions? What's the revenue you get from those trainers? Is it through a, a monthly fee that you get based on the total amount of revenue they've generated? Is it via a license fee from, from that trainer uh, that when they're in the club or is it a case of they just bring members in? So if you're looking at the trainers, you can look at them to say, okay, you can charge an additional fee for a 15 minute session with the Theragun. You can increase the fees that you charge on an hourly basis because you've now got further insights and knowledge into the application of this to the body as well. And the members will be coming to them for that advice. And um, that would be the difference between a consumer buying the product and a member, sorry, a member buying the product and a member going to a professional. That knowledge and insight that that professional adds, the understanding of the muscles, how the, uh, how the body moves, et cetera, that is the application that they're looking for and the insight they're looking for to help them um, gain more. So in answer to your question, there's multiple different ways. There's retail to generate revenue, of course, the biggest re return on revenue, I believe, is going to come from these bolt-ons, uh, where we're seeing that as a solution. And then the final piece is from the PT revenue yeah. or group classes. Lee's asking um, what sort of price you'd charge for a 15-minute session. What do you see people, what do you see guys charging? So we've seen that people adding around 15 to 20% on top of their additional value. So if you're charging around £40 pound, um, for, a, for a, a training session for an hour, probably around 10 to £15 pound uh, realistically, maybe down to um, ten pound realistically for a fifteen. But again, depending on the area, affluence, etc., of your clientele, you can you can pitch that. But I would say anywhere around fifteen pounds for for that session is is doable. We we have our own reset stores in in the US in malls where people come to pay to have um, uh, sessions uh, specifically as well. That's good. So if they take the in club solution, do they need training? Would you provide training or is it quite intuitive to, to just get on with? Absolutely. Bar Pastor Ben, he's the uh, master of this. So, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the device has really become something so simple for everybody to use. Uh, it's literally a case of turning it on, deciding upon which speed on the body feels most appropriate for you. Everybody's different. And that's why we wanted to create a device that was able to speak to different bodies. Um, and then really just letting it float, holding it in the various different positions that are available through the triangular ergonomics. It is fantastic technology, uh, but it's certainly not technical at all in terms of its application. Um, and we really pride ourselves on our education. Uh, we have a wealth of digital resources for trainers to quickly log in and follow. Uh, that digital education also relates to various different professions, whether it's for massage therapy routines, uh, for the practitioner community, uh, physio, osteo, chiro. We actually have an abundant level of digital education, which is available uh, for people to follow as well with Therabody University. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, from, uh, um, just to add to that, from a um, trainer perspective, we also have the uh, foundations course, which we deliver for the trainers to get that understanding, which you've seen a lot of that on this uh, presentation anyway. But we take a deeper dive into the into a little bit more of the history about the product and the brand. And then we move on to a opportunity for the performance specialist course where trainers can take that, which will then help them understand how to apply uh, the product in different settings, whether you're working with a client doing Metcon, Tabata, uh, general fitness or hypertrophy work, et cetera. And you can apply that through the performance specialist. So um, it's not for everyone. Some people want to take that deeper dive. Others are just happy with a foundation level of, of, of basic knowledge. But we wanted to cater for everyone. And hence, Ben said, we cater through the foundation right through to practitioner level uh, as well with a, with a deeper level on every single one. 
Nice. There's a question around cost, really, in terms of the for the in club solution. Basically, is there a is there a large upfront cost, or is it a, is there a joint venture commercially with by Therabody? So it's, it's two, there's a number of different options. We offer leasing. We offer, obviously, outright purchase as well. Um, but we also offer uh, look at the option where we can look at a joint venture as well. Um, but we will we'll discuss that in, um, individually with each uh, club. Um, the, uh, the rates that you guys as an independent gyms member get is, is preset. But in terms of the purchasing around that, we can look at the different options for you as well. I think probably similar to conversations around sort of body stat analysis so people companies like InBody where they'll lease finance it but spread it in terms of a chargeable solution I think it helps I probably look at this in a similar manner Lee, um, Lee was asking the question so the one come through um, on the station in the video how many guns come with them and how many guns per club would you suggest or perhaps per member, effectively, the ratio of members. So the, the, this is one of those finite, finite things where we're looking at um, cost versus demand, because with, on that cart that you saw in the video, there's six Theraguns on there, and then there's the four wave rollers. If you come down to the mini, there's four Theraguns on there with the two minis, and obviously you have the singular devices as well. Now, what's the fine art in terms of the, the exact amount that you should have? It would be based on demand. If you increase demand, there's an opportunity to sell devices because people will think, oh, I don't want to wait for one. I want to have one. But of course, you can go all out and fill the room with as many Theraguns as you like. So we're also looking at carts with 12 devices on there um, instead of any wave rollers. So it's all just Theraguns on there. So And that could be utilized more in a studio space. So we've, we're always creating, always looking at new, new ways of what's the right thing for each of you, because what works in one might not work in a different club. So we need to be able to provide you with those solutions. Um, if I was to if I was to dictate, look at the look at your member journey, and look at um, throughout your club. What are those touch points going to be? Is it a case of we don't need two carts? We just need a cart on the gym floor, a cart in the studio, and then uh, and a couple of individual devices for personal trainers. Or is it just a mini cart sat with the personal trainers? hidden behind a door and they're the only ones that have access to it as well. So I think that's where you've just got to look at that journey. Yeah, fantastic. Last couple of questions. Um, in the current COVID world, in terms of, um, you, obviously you can't share equipment within a facility. How do you get around that? Are they interchangeable heads or do you sell extra heads or do you, are they wiped clean? What's the, what's the latest with that? So yeah, as, do you want me to talk about Marcus? Yeah, you take it, Ben. Yeah, so they're, they're very, very simple to, to remove on and off. You just bring it in line uh, with the tip here, give it a little push. And then in order to take it off, you hold your fingers either side of the seal and then slight little push backwards. And to my earlier point, they won't absorb any uh, material or fragment from skin, lotion, sweat. Uh, they wipe on, wipe off. This is, I'm glad somebody's asked about that because it is a really important point. Uh, so from a hygienic standpoint, so easy to clean on and off. There's no absorption through the attachment. And that's a, that's a huge point of difference. Um, so yeah, no rust, no rust issues. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's, a, it's an entire kind of uh, closed cell PU foam, closed cell PU foam. Uh, is the is the kind of actual definition of the material. Uh, and, and just to add to that, um, as an example, I've been talking to a lot of people recently where they're finding that people have been hand sanitizing with the alcohol in the hand sanitizer and it's destroying things that they touch, especially uh, plastics and things like that as well, because the alcohol eats into it. Because it's a, it's a closed uh, foam, it doesn't have that effect. The alcohol doesn't have the same effect on the on the product so when in the clubs that we've got it in that have had it during the whole of the, the pandemic or the uh throughout this process an antibacterial wipe and a spray uh is all that's been used and a hand sanitizer um and then we've had no degradation of the product uh at all and the same with the handle i'm taking Thank for the handles yep. yeah Fantastic. yeah sounds good and i think i think that's all the questions that come through one last one from me really is 
is this easier on your IT band than a foam roller? Because they are no, a nightmare. <laughs> Depends on the workout you've just done. But yeah, I, 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 I can see that, Robert, you're the same as me, uh, not a light person. So when we, uh, when, we, when, when, we, when we lay on a foam roller, it's brutal. <laughs> so so um, yes, uh, the, when you've got DOMS, it's DOMS and it, you're, it's, you're, you're just aiding that benefit. But for someone that trains regularly myself using the Theragun, uh, I find it much more um, nicer. Yeah. So that way, it still penetrates a long way, and it, but it's nicer for me because I can control it versus me laying my body weight onto a foam roller. Yeah, fantastic. So that's, I think that's literally all the questions done. So um, guys, thank you very much for hosting today. Um, we've talked about giving away a free gun. Uh, free Theragun, Thera so we'll um, we'll do that draw offline and uh, see in the Facebook group. And um, one of you lucky guys will uh, will be winning that. So thanks for joining us, and um, yeah, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Just just if I could add quickly, I know Callum's asked a great question about uh, education. We'd be happy to provide uh, complimentary access to our foundations course uh, for anybody on the call as well, uh, should they wish to kind of take up that digital information. Um, so yeah, appreciate you asking that, Callum. Yeah, fantastic. Great, thank you. Excellent, guys. Yep. Yeah, once again, thank you for uh, thanks for hosting, and we'll uh, much appreciated. Absolute pleasure. Look forward to speaking to you all soon. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Bye. Bye. Bye.